to the hardcore hip hop. Oh, hello. Hey. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, yeah, stream. <laughs> I forgot that I was uh, on stream. I've... I just wanted to jump in here and say hey, but uh, no, I just yeah. stopped the music. What's up? Uh, nothing much. Just waiting around here, looking over the patch notes, trying to figure out what I'm going to be saying. Oh, that's all good, too. I'm uh, doing the same, but, uh, geez. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I might as well... Uh, at least talk to you for a few minutes, but I kind of want to do it off stream. Uh, let me see if I can just mute myself on stream, put the music back on. All right. <sighs> We're good. Yeah, that probably be. Good and or useful. Uh, we good? Uh, hello, hello. All right. Hmm.
Hey guys, what's up? I'm finally ready to start this thing. I was just talking to uh, good buddy Tree Man, who is in Discord hanging out already. If anybody wants to try to join in on the fun, I know there's a couple of you there in Twitch chat already, but it's once again me, Freelance Dota, and the title says with friends, so hopefully some people are here. And, uh, you know, I haven't really been inviting as many people as I tried to the first time around, so these have been a little more casual. Um, I was trying to do some fancy overlays in time for today, but we didn't get around to it with all the changes I wanted to test, test out in game, which I honestly didn't get through all of them. So if you guys are in chat and you want to shout out at any point during the show, whatever you guys want to talk about, uh, I'll try to get back to it if it's during this first per portion. But then after I go through the, all the changes, I will be just opening up the floor to uh, anybody who wants to call in, such as uh, Treeman, who's already waiting. And whoever else wants to show up, you can ping me in Discord, in Twitch chat, or anywhere you want. Um, I might miss it if it's on Twitter, but you can try. Uh, so then, uh, thanks for being here, guys. Once again, Freelance Dota, and let's get into this. It's 7.12. I kind of called the very first change, and boy, did my heart jump when I saw it. I'm really excited to see Pangolier in Captain's Mode. And let's not forget, the context of this whole patch is that we're in DAC right now. Of course, this is like TI in China, uh, to quote a certain someone on the stream earlier today. And I really do feel like that's the atmosphere they've created here with this large hero balance patch right on the first day of a tournament, or after the first day, I should say. So it's going to be really hype. Um, I'll try to comment on some of the overall meta changes as we go through, but I'll try to save everything specific for the end. All right, so <clears throat> the first major, or the, the only real global, global change is this plus 5% increase to the stack bounty increase that was added, I think, in 7.10. And uh, it hasn't really been abused by any team in particular yet, or anyone I've seen any heroes. So we'll see if it continues to be a factor on the meta, but it should add, increase the stock in some of the heroes who do favor stacking, like supports and certain carries. Um, the clarity mono regeneration was reduced by 0.2, so going to be noticeable, but not really going to affect the tempo increase that clarity was already giving. So I think it's going to pretty much just take the edge off of that little fad we were seeing with spamming clarities, which, you know, I do I do think that whenever anything like that becomes too popular, it just kind of gets a little boring or something like that, so that's going to take the edge off of it. And a lot of these other changes also buff all the other less popular heroes, so I'm really excited to see what happens at DAC tomorrow. Uh, Heart of Tarask, Strength increased by 5. That item is seeing a lot of play, but will be further increased, like tanky cores like Bristleback, etc. Um, Moonshard, attack speed increased by 10. That item is pretty unpopular, so it'll be curious to see what happens. I think it's going to be completely negligible, but I like to see uh, early moon shards on heroes that would otherwise buy Mask of Madness and don't want to get blown up or don't like the silence aspect, but that's not really a thing we see yet, so maybe that's where Ice Frog is pushing it. Uh, Nullifier, the projectile speed decreased makes it easier to disjoint and potentially get out of the way or out of a compromising position before it hits you and obviously you can still pop your BKB while it's in the air so it gives you that little window a little bit longer um, refresher orb mana cost or excuse me mana regeneration increased um, this is something I've already been hoping to see is m more mana regeneration options and uh, the casual refresher orb definitely going to be something we hopefully see more of going forward. There's only a few heroes who really want to hold on to the Refresher Orb and not just put it in their backpack, because most heroes who buy a Refresher Orb, it's almost always their seventh item anyway, unless you're a certain subset of heroes. So for those heroes who are in that subset, having more mana regen, definitely something they're interested in. I'll be looking to see, you know, I could start naming them, but I'm sure you guys can imagine, especially on the initiators like uh, Tidehunter, Magnus, who already have kind of mana issues, it'll be nice. Satanic, duration increased by half a second, so 20% increase, nice to see that some of these less popular items, especially these two big strength items built with Reaver, are getting buffed. Uh, they're not as popular as their counterparts, I would say, so that makes good sense to me, and I do love to pay attention to these items. I, I got really hyped for all these item changes when I read them the first time around. Um, Silver Edge, the break duration decreased, but the cooldown reduced as well, so it, it's a change to the uptime. I wish I'd actually done the math ahead of time, but I think it evens out to being roughly the same uptime 
but just a slightly shorter break duration, so it's not as punishing on the heroes with passives, so they're not as screwed when they get broken. Skull Basher, the Anubis will lay both the bash duration increased by just another 0.1 seconds, so not that much, but still enough to hopefully help out some of those heroes, and you'll see later there's other changes to specific basher heroes, so we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> the Spirit Vessel damage type change from 3% direct HP to 4.5% of total HP, I'm assuming, uh, magic damage, so it should be roughly the same for the heroes with base magic resistance, but for other heroes or heroes with pipes, or if you're under the effect of spell immunity, of course, then Spirit Vessel is going to be slightly less effective than before. So we'll see how that ends up affecting the item. I think it was due for a nerf, of course. It was quite popular, and this is really the first nerf to the item, so it took, it, took them quite a, kind of a while, but good to see that they gave it one. Anti-Mage, the Mana Void damage increase at lower levels, so it just scales better with the missing mana. And it doesn't scale any higher, though, at level 3. Should be a nice increase to that hero, though we did see him win a game at DAC already today, so... Remains to be seen if he's going to be picking up just because of, you know, the, the meta, or whether this change in particular will make him more viable. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Arc Warden, I'm super excited for my boy Muddy to maybe finally see his favorite hero played. I don't know if that's going to happen. Flux cooldown increased, or excuse me, reduced by 2 seconds, and Magnetic Field AoE increased by 25, so just small kind of quality of life increases there. Axe, the Battle Hunger duration increased by 2 seconds. Not quite the major buff I think people were looking for for Axe, but Battle Hunger as, an, as a skill being more useful is definitely, I think, a good way to make the hero more viable, so I'm looking forward to maybe some Axe play at DAC. Let me check, check Twitch for a second, guys. LGD picked Arc Warden against TNC, huh? Okay. I did not know that. I think I must have missed that one. That might have been after I went to sleep, though. I missed the last game. The, the last two games of DAC from this morning. Uh, Shuriken Toss, Mana Cost increased from scaling 120 up to 150 now to static 150 on Bounty Hunter. That hero was starting to see first round picks by teams like Secret and other teams that value that kind of map control, sacrificial support style, so I think there's even been like three position Bounty Hunter recently. We'll see how it continues to play out, but that'll nerf his early potential where he gets that 1-1-1 one, one, one build and just has the stun. Makes it a little more uh, dangerous for him to just spam his invis and potentially risk not having the ability to cancel the TP, so we'll see which build becomes more popular for Bounty Hunter. Bloodseeker, Thirst, Linger, Duration, actually a huge increase by 100%, so we'll see if Bloodseeker can come back into the meta, but it's been a long time. It feels like maybe three months. Uh, he was okay back at TI, but since then he's kind of fallen off. Uh, Chen, Holy Persuasion, cannot target non player ally creeps in case you're confused that means he can't go to the off lane or rather any lane and send back creeps at the start of the game so it is a big nerf to his first minute of the game and I think this is probably the single biggest nerf maybe of this patch uh, I, I'm curious to hear if anyone else calls in or anybody who's a Chen expert wants to tell me whether Chen can really make up for this some other way but I feel like Chen's going to be taking a big nosedive if you were buying stock in Chen uh, at DAC, so hope you guys didn't make any predictions. I guess there's no compendium to predict in, but still, in my head, I'm always predicting. Uh, Clink's strafe duration increased by half a second. That hero already struggling to really find relevance, and I feel like strafe is a pretty weak ability, even though it is really cool. The rework back in 7.08 was nice, but we'll see if... Uh, Anybody picks him. I kind of doubt it. Crystal Maiden, I love to see her getting buffed. I actually laughed out. I think I cheered when I read this one because base damage increased by three. Uh, I mean, she's not going to be anything more than a support, most likely. Don't get ahead of yourselves. But with that and the Arcane Aura self mana regen increase, it's just an increase by 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 at the lower levels. It's nice to see that she won't be so forced into, you know, just harassing with her spells and whatnot. Maybe she can actually not be so pitiful, but I don't know. 
I don't know what this... I, th I think these are kind of two separate things, like increasing her damage and then increasing her mana regen. You're not going to be able to... Uh, I don't know. I will be very curious to see if players can make the most of this. This seems like a really good push in the right direction, but Crystal Maiden has been out of the meta for a long time. Now, Darkseer, here's a really contentious change. Everybody is concerned about the cooldown increase at lower levels. It now scales from, instead of just a static 32, now it's 60 down to 30. So it now it's slightly shorter than before at level 4, but you're looking at a almost twice as long 60 second cooldown at level 1. The vacuum AoE was increased to compensate. The cast range now scales to compensate. And the other thing, of course, is the cast or the pull duration now scales. So it's a little weaker at level one overall, but the radius is larger, so it's more useful as a value point, is what I would say. The damage also rescaled, though, so it's not really. I don't think the, da the damage is even the important part. I think I missed that the first time around, actually. Uh, the wall of replica changes are nice. It, your illusions are thirty, or I guess, twenty-five percent less damage taken and the width slightly increased I think to make up for the fact that some of the choke points on the map are a little wider now so that'll at least make Wall of Replica feel a little bit stronger but I'm really looking forward to playing Darkseer myself and I'm actually feeling like we'll see him quite a bit at DAC knowing the teams there, some of these Chinese teams I'm sure would love to play it although I guess some of the players like XXS is one of the ones I think of he's not really playing uh, offlane anymore so we'll see how that goes Dark Willow finally getting a nerf Terrorize cast time increased so it's slightly longer de delay when you cast it before it takes effect Bedlam cooldown also was increased so it no longer scales down to 20 seconds it now is increased by 5 seconds at level 2 and 10 seconds at level 3 so it's 40, 35, 30 Dazzle poison touch damage increased looking forward to seeing Core Dazzle continue to be a thing I know there was some talk about mid one playing uh, Dazzle mid in pubs, and it now is increased by at the higher levels 4, 8, 12. So it does 52 damage, I think that's per application or per tick or whatever. Uh, so it's still physical damage, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Core Dazzles can do with it. I'm, I'm pretty hyped for that. I would love to see Core Dazzle at this tournament. That would get me really hyped. Uh, Death Prophet, Spirit Siphon, Charge Restoration now scales. Instead of its static 45, it's 60 down to 45. So at level 4, it restores just as quickly as before, but it's a more slow at level 1. Death Prophet, Silence Mana Cost increased. It's now, from a static 80, it now scales 80 up to 110, which feels perfectly acceptable considering how popular that hero has been and just a very strong ability, honestly, if you look at it. <clears throat> Disruptor getting a, a nerf rightfully it no longer his his ult that is no longer lingers for half a second when you walk out of it it already ended automatically at the end of the duration but still that's a slight nerf to the kind of when a hero is running away from you and you just drop the static storm to get that silence on them it's less effective for that now because there is no linger for half a second when they walk out of it kinetic field cooldown increased also at level lo lower levels by plus six plus 4 and plus 2, so now it's 19 at level 1 down to 10. Once again, at level 4, Drow Ranger getting a precision aura, excuse me, yeah, attack bonus increase, that's what I thought. It just scales a little bit better now, instead of 10 up to 34, it's now 10 up to 40%. Elder Titan, Echo Stomp, initial stun duration reduced from 0 0.8 to 0 0.2, so that basically means that the hero no longer can just go for that stun to keep enemies from running away. It's only going to be 0.2 seconds now. You have to hit the echo on them to get them actually asleep. If I'm understanding that right, I think that should be a nerf to the roaming kind of Elder Titan play. Maybe somebody in chat can confirm that's what I'm understanding correctly. Um, literally no damage. Ember Spirit, base armor increased by 1. That's all I need to say. Uh, Enchantress, somebody pointed out that this kind of makes Enchantress mirror Chen now. Both heroes having the extremely nerfed kind of jungle early on means that they're more like laning heroes with just a jungle flavor because they kind of have to think of something to do for the first minute. Both heroes having less creeps early on. In fact, the really important thing to note here is that Enchantress's 
and Chant, what she uses to take control of creeps, no longer allows her to have 100% uptime. At level 1, the cooldown rescale that used to be 30 at level 1, now it's 55, and the duration is now 50 at level 1, so you're going to have some downtime there, 5 seconds. So until you put points in Enchant, she's not really going to be doing very much with creeps before. The other part of this nerf is that Untouchable no longer as effective at level 1. You need to put the second point in it before it's approaching how effective it used to be. And that means Untouchable probably going to be something you want to prioritize if you're laning this Enchantress, but it almost does feel like she's back to being a little weaker in the lane and stronger in the jungle. I don't know. She just has to be, you know, harassing for the first minute of the game using her other features, like her fast attack speed. Uh, also, the amount of cost of Impetus was rescaled, so it's a little more pricey at the high level, but 15 less at level 1 makes her definitely have a strong early game timing. And in fact, I'll point out that there's some other heroes who got the same kind of buffs, like Anti-Mage being one, but I'll point them out when we get to them later. Gyrocopter, uh, I almost said that with a bad accent or something by accident. Uh, Gyrocopter, flat cannon cooldown increased by 10 seconds, so making having to make that spill, spell count when he uses it, I like to see that kind of nerf. The spell isn't any worse, you just have to be careful when you use it now, in my opinion. Uh, homing Missile hits to destroy also now a static 3, that's just a, you know removing a little bit of knowledge burden there. Io, the recipient of a pretty nice set of changes here. Some people are unsure, but I think this is pretty much a net buff. I'm really looking forward to playing Io because I've never really learned him myself, and this makes me want to play him. He feels kind of like a real hero, just with a cool playstyle to me, instead of just being this one-dimensional like support almost, because he's now kind of aggressive if you really want to look at it that way. Um, your movement speed is going to be set to the target of the tether's speed as well, but there's no duration, so you no longer have to worry about recasting the ability constantly. You can just sit with somebody if you want to and save that cooldown to escape with. Relocate cooldown has been increased by 10 at all levels to compensate a little bit, so he's a little less effective with the early kind of, well, at all points of, through the game with the uh, rotational kind of like ganking style there. Uh, IO has tether movement speed bonus now scales slightly worse at lower levels. It's minus 3 to 1% at the lower levels and just still has the 16% increase at level 4. The stat sc sharing also scales now. It's from 1.5 static down. Now it's 1.2 up to 1.5 on the region sharing. So I think that's a nice change. It'll make the hero feel like you want to put, put points in tether whereas before it was kind of negligible. I think a lot of people ignored it for whatever reason. Also the plus four, or excuse me, minus four base damage is a little bit of a nerf because he does just have, he's gonna be doing a lot of attacking just constantly and he does have all those nice talents so prevents him from being a little too overpowered. We'll see if any core IO comes out though. I think people are definitely expecting he could be powerful in that position but not a lot of buffs overall. He's still weaker unless you're looking at this change as a major buff, so we'll see what Io does. Lashrak, base movement speed increased by 5. Sorry, I just looked at chat for a second. <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I got the gist of it when I explained it. Thanks for the comment, though. Um, back to Lashrak. The lightning, uh, lightning is now better for last hitting at level 1, the value point is good, but you're going to need to be putting more points in it if you want to use it aggressively as a slow, because the slow duration now scales worse at lower levels, minus 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 at the lower levels there, so pretty short, 0 0.4 at lower levels, but the cast point was also reduced by 0 0.05, so I'm looking forward to playing some Lashrak, because I, I think he will play better now, but it's questionable whether he'll be more popular just in general. Uh, he'll be probably smoother to play, but you have to be kind of a Leshrac fan to want to play him, I feel like. We'll see. Uh, Lich getting a net increase here at all levels. He gets plus 25, plus 20, plus 15, and plus 10 mana more than he did before when using Sacrifice to get 
uh, on one of his creeps to get mana. So Lich, already somebody that most people hate him whenever he's picked because of how good he is. And now he's just getting these small buffs once again. He's going to be kind of like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but Kunkka was kind of in this position for a long time. And he's still pretty darned good. Uh, Lich getting a lot of these buffs. We'll see if he ends up becoming overpowered once again and just crushing you know, the meta one of these days. But I don't know. Nobody really likes to play or watch Lich. So we'll see what ends up happening if teams just ignore him because of that. And uh, that's probably enough for now about Lich. Lifestealer, open wounds, mana cost. Now a static 140 at all levels. It was previously scaling. So just a small check on that hero and the fact that he does need to be getting some items maybe to deal with his mana costs if he's wanting to be spamming them a lot, but I think he'll be fine. Uh, probably not going to see any real decrease in pick rate, honestly. Lion. Earth Spike mana cost reduced at lower levels, so now he can spam it quite a bit more. I would love to see some core Lion, but I just have a feeling that even with all these changes and buffs he's getting, kind of like the effect I was just mentioning with Lich and Kunkka, I have my doubts if Lion will be picked that much more. I know he was picked once or twice at DAC today, but I don't remember if he won or not. Uh, I think I didn't get to watch that game. Uh, either way, Earth Spike, probably his best spell at level 1, so he wants to be spamming it. It's kind of like the treatment Bane got a while back with Brain Sap, so hoping that Lion can be relevant here. He's probably going to be like first pick worthy when he does appear in the meta. He's just such a strong hero with 3 disables. So Magnus, a slight increase to the Skewer AoE. And the reverse polarity stun duration increased, so it's actually only at lower levels increased by half a second and then 0.25 seconds. So at least those first few reverse polarity is going to be more impactful, but not a hero we've seen a lot lately. Maybe going to be making a resurgence in the offlane here with certain Chinese players at DAC showing up who were absent from the previous tournaments, so we'll have to see how that one goes. I'm sure that was taken into account when they made these buffs, though, so... We'll see. Maybe the pubs are lit up with Magnus, and I just missed it. Um, Marana, base damage. The range now rescaled. It was an 11 damage window here. Now it's only 5 damage. So it's a probably net buff just because the consistency is what most players prefer. But we'll see if Marana actually has any increase. I know Lena got the same treatment recently, and I don't believe it made any impact. So... These are the kind of things that smooth out some raw edges or rough edges in the game, but not going to make a huge impact, I would say. All right, uh, Monkey King Wukong's command attack rate increased very slightly, and not a hero I expect to see very much change because of it, but we'll see. I love Monkey King. Uh, Necrophos gets two buffs. They're not together, but they are both for Necro. He gets an increase to Heartstopper Aura at higher levels, so is rewarded if he wants to put earlier points into that spell. But oh, and, and also, he also gets the increased mana cost, or rather lowered mana cost at lower levels for Death Pulse, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this hero maybe come back into the meta. I don't think he's been too oppressive after the nerfs he got, after, you know, of course, he was very popular at TI. You know, we, we want to see a he healthy amount of every hero, and... Uh, Necro looks like he's well on his way to being back. Uh, another hero who I think will be back is Ogre. He was first pick status for like, I don't know, for a long time there. And it seems like, you know, Virtus Pro, for example, who are at DAC right now, would be the first team to pick up on this, maybe. Maybe even we could see the core Ogre. I know people have theory crafted. I don't think the physical damage Ogre is for real, but I think the caster Ogre with this buff will be even better than before so I'm looking forward to seeing maybe some ogre in a you know farming maybe a four position who knows Omni Knight mana cost increased for repel a nice change I look forward to seeing that here a little bit less just a little bit though Phantom Assassin can now be targeted on dispel immune targets this is something people kind of wanted for her wait I, I'm gonna show my lack of playing actual Dota if I get this wrong, but I can't remember if uh, Phantom Strike actually can target spell immune, un immune units or not, because people talked about changing that forever, but at this point, Stifling Dagger can, in fact, target spell immune units, and, for example, she could bash them with her ranged attack, so looking forward to seeing that hero picked more. I know people were predicting some pretty wild stuff in Discord, but I'm not sure I agree with all that. <clears throat> 
All right, probably the biggest change overall as far as single hero buff goes is Phoenix here. Not only is Supernova now an increased radius of 1300 up by 300, it's also the fact that Supernova now counters Night Stalker really hard. And uh, I, I really look forward to seeing how that plays out at DAC. Uh, Night Stalker, not a hero that has been overly popular lately, but pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Okay. Yeah, I think Phantom Strike was buffed not that long ago to be able to target spell immune targets as well. So, if I'm not mistaken, and I think I think Tree Man's right, that makes PA pretty darn good. So Phoenix also getting a huge buff. This little note here, he has the highest priority, meaning he can basically override. <clears throat> excuse me, Night Stalker's ultimate when he wants to. Uh, pretty much allows Phoenix to be the ultimate counter to nighttime strategies and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. I think this is going to be really fun. We're going to see it probably playing out immediately. Um, there weren't any Night Stalker buffs of course so maybe the hero is just completely forgotten but we'll see what happens. Razor slight nerfs a 50 cast range reduction on the static link cast range there. Unstable current damage also now scales quite a bit worse. It's now minus 40, 30, 20, 10, so only 60 at level 1. Considerably worse with that single point. We'll have to see what kind of builds the Razor players are taking after this. And here's another huge rework. People have already been calling out for the core Ricky after these changes. It does mean that basically his ultimate is useful, in my opinion, now. It was kind of tricky before. I mean, I don't mean to make a pun or anything, but like... It wasn't exactly fun to use before, whereas I think now you can pretty much just dump it on somebody and hope you get the kill. So I look forward to this. I mean, before they could just, I don't know. I think this is going to be fun. Uh, people are saying that Core Ricky is now more viable. Um, the duration is increased, but the important part is that it now hits heroes randomly instead of just hitting in an AoE once per second. So it's kind of like uh, Eclipse or Omni Slash in a way. And it also won't hit creeps unless there's hero, no heroes in the in the area. So I look forward to playing or seeing some core Ricky. I'm probably not going to play him. I'm not that disgusting. Um, Rubik telekinesis cooldown now increased at lower levels by plus six, plus four, plus two. Looking forward to seeing Rubik because I'm sure he's not going anywhere. <laughs> I said that as a as a reflex, but if I'm being honest, yeah, he's not going to go anywhere. He's just too good. Uh, Sand King in the same category as well did get a nerf. Burst Strike duration now scales. I, I'm kind of sad to see this unique duration go away. Taking the things like that out of the game just feels weird to me, but all the same, it does scale now, which is okay, but it is a slight nerf to a hero that I felt like was in a pretty good place. You could have maybe left him be. He also has five less movement speed, you know, at his base movement speed, so I don't know. With the changes to boots and everything else, it feels like Sand King is getting worse and worse in the offlane. And I'm not really looking forward to playing him as an offlaner anymore, so can't say anything else about that. But unfortunate for me, Shadow Demon getting a large buff, I would say. Uh, it was maybe suggested that I demonstrate this, but the fact is that this hero is probably ridiculous. I think I'll demonstrate it later if I want to. But uh, basically, not only does it last longer as far as the effect, but it now continuously dispels. So Demonic Purge... Continuously dispelling, of course, it now has a longer cooldown, 40 up to 60, uh, from 40 up to 60, and the slow now scales where it did not before, but it still feels like a very strong spell. Uh, there's no root at the end, of course, but I feel like this hero is getting a lot closer to uh, strong. There's some op oppressive things that he can do. Uh, if you're a team that relies on buffs, being able to dispel them constantly can be pretty darned strong. And his Aghanim Scepter, I do feel like, is you know the gateway to a core Shadow Demon. Uh, I think I talked about it with Tree Man already, but VP, you know, they're the kind of team that loves their offlane Shadow Demon. So we'll see if that comes out at DAC. I'm l looking forward to it. Slark getting some buffs. This is a nice one, getting the base HP regen increase nearly 100%. Fits with the you know style of the hero and his ultimate. Um, Turn rate increase also helps with his combos, but 
I fail to see how this is going to make Slark any more relevant unless, you know, we're looking for some kind of weird, like, carry in the offlane, solo Slark kind of deal or something like that. Maybe not, not solo, maybe dual lane, offlane Slark. People have also said, I've seen already, uh, Core Slarter might be val uh, viable, but that hero definitely hasn't been that popular, although I do remember hearing on the DAC panels today that there were uh, there was talk of five position slarter being viable so four and five position slarter are definitely going to be getting a boost here no longer 15 percent more uh, taking 50 percent more damage when he's using sprint but he does also have to now deal with the fact that the duration is two seconds shorter so less uptime does impact his mobility slightly but the hero just really could stand to be a, a kind of like a, a lane harassing support and when he can't do that when the 15% damage amp was there maybe this is going to be the put the change that pushes him over the top uh core slaughter maybe it's more viable because of this who knows i do think it just makes him a better hero overall so definitely something that certain teams favor and certain teams do not sniper we saw picked last night and he already gets another buff here it's a mana cost reduction on his ultimate so Going to be making the Aghanims maybe more viable, since one of the problems before is, even though he has great intelligence for an Agi hero, well, overall, too, he's pretty good, but uh, still an expensive spell. <clears throat> it's probably enough about Sniper. Spectre, spectral, damage uh, spectral dagger damage increased, making it more of a harassment nuke early on, something she was sorely lacking. It does also help with her last hitting slightly if she wants to use it on creeps, I guess. Spearbreaker... Now not as punished for using his Empowering Haste, which is basically the active portion of his aura. So now he can use the speed increase without being slowed down afterward by the... They mean slowed down, but basically you would lose the passive aura increase, which would be a decrease for you. But as a trade-off, the cooldown is now increased from 12 to 20 seconds. So we'll see what happens with spirit breaker but i'd love to see him come back into the meta along with slarter two of these kind of brawly get in your face supports most likely or offlaners potentially templar assassin base movement speed increased by 10 already a hero that has seemed overpowered in the right situation with her trap damage and all that so who knows if that's going to be enough i kind of feel like it's going to be nice but only for certain teams who already favored it uh, Timbersaw, I'm very excited about this change. It basically amounts to Chakram has less mana, mana per second and mana when you just mana cost period. And it means that you can use it a lot more early on when he's already very strong, but it still scales the same at level 3. So he's not going to be any more oppressive at level 25. Really, the hero kind of falls off in late game, I feel like, compared to other heroes, but... At his early peak, he's going to be even stronger than before. He can kind of do that early diving behind enemy lines and just casting chakra, uh, Chakram over and over. So looking forward to... I would actually love to play some Timbersaw. This is making me want to get back into the offlane. Darkseer, Timbersaw. Uh, and also, I'll be honest, Undying is somebody I would play. But <clears throat> Tiny getting a slight nerf in the form of base HP regen reduced by 1 overall back to 1.5. And Avalanche cooldown now scales. Instead of static 17, it's 20 down to 17. So not any worse at level 4, but just a little weaker early on. Probably what the hero needed. We're almost done, guys, and we'll be getting to your comments shortly. Battle Fury offlane Slark. Oh, God. I just saw that in chat. That's pretty dirty. Um, I, I'm kind of hoping that Battle Fury Slark is what we would see if he, he was picked, but I'll talk to you about it when we get you in here. Um... Trant Protector, base intelligence increased by 3, just to maybe push that hero in the right direction, help him be more active early on with that slight increase to his mana. Troll Warlord, now a slightly reduced base attack time while he's transformed with Berserker's Rage. Not going to be too much of an increase, but just a slight, basically, DPS increase. Um, Tusk, getting a slight nerf, was extremely popular. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Ice Shard cooldown decreased by 2 seconds now, or excuse me, increased by 2 seconds at all levels. Pretty much his best or most signature skill in some ways, so probably exactly the nerf he needed. Uh, we'll see if he's still going to be in the first round kind of pick ban category, but I guess he's not really first 
round ban right now. Certain teams will first round pick him though. Uh, Undying, getting a nice. I'm really excited. This is a nice quality of life buff. Basically, your tombstone zombies now have more attack speed when they were getting the buff, so they're going to be finishing off people who are low more easily. And you also get more health back for killing heroes while under Flesh Golem. So it was a pretty measly 10% before of your total health. Now it's actually a scaling 15, 20, 25%. And considering, you know, this makes it much more in line with other ultimates, I'm really hyped to see if this hero were picked as a core. That's what I feel like this is a buff to. Um, Warlock, slight increase to the Golem damage. I, ca I call it slight, but it's... 25 at level 2 and 50 damage at level 3, so pretty sizable still. I guess that's what, a 40% increase at level 3. Wind Ranger going to be getting some changes here. Not the kind of changes I feel like I was expecting, or I heard on the DAC panel earlier they all wanted Wind Ranger to get buffs. But uh, as far as what she did get, I don't know what this amounts to because I haven't had a chance to test this one. Maybe somebody in chat can comment, but I don't know what exactly clunky... I mean, I felt the clunkiness, but who knows if it's going to make her that much better. Uh, finally, one of my favorite heroes, Wyvern, of course, getting increased attack range under Arctic Burn at lower levels, plus 75, 50, and 25 at levels 1, 2, and 3. And she also gets a whopping 1 base intelligence. That is a, a tremendous base intelligence increase. Tremendous. Um, better slow down with those buffs there. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, she's going to be overpowered in no time. Zeus, attack range increased by 30. And also, base damage increased by 5. Finally putting him in line with some of these other mids, I feel like. That is, of course, putting him in line with Luna. So he did have, I think, the shortest attack range of any ranged hero. And now he's in exactly in line with Luna. So he feels a little more normal, but... Maybe I'm forgetting Gyrocopter, but he's in there somewhere too. But either way, uh, Zeus will feel a little bit more competitive against some of these other short-ranged mids or short-ranged heroes that he would be up in lane against or trying to harass. So maybe going to be the resurgence of mid-Zeus. I would be excited for that, even offlane or some other form of Zeus. All right, guys, that's all I've got to say about the patch for now. Um, I'm going to bring Tree Man in here in a second, and I don't think anybody else has showed up yet, so we're not going to dra drag this out too much, so let me just collect my thoughts and give him a, a split second to get ready. But as far as predictions for the meta goes, we're going to try to talk about the highlights and make a few predictions, but overall, besides that, I mean, we touched on it when I went through it, but I think Shadow Demon and Phoenix could be two of the biggest ones. Chen and Enchantress got big nerfs. And I think that's really it. I mean, IO could be huge, but I think it's going to come down to the teams. And pretty much all the other changes are like that, too. So, Yo, are you ready, Treeman? Mm, you might have yourself muted. Oh, Treeman, this is what happened before. Can you uh, leave voice and come back? I cannot hear you test Fairly yep well. all right you're back so that's the thing that happened uh the first patch show around but thanks for coming back yeah. so i don't know if uh you come up, came up with anything uh brilliant since we spoke last of, about what was that oh gosh o over half an hour ago Wow, that took a lot longer than well, I thought. Well, I was starting to theorycraft something with the Riki. That uh, Tricks of the Trade buff makes his ult better than an Omni Slash at level 1 wow. compared to a level 1 Omni Slash. So the real difference if between you... them is there's, an, there's a radius versus the fact that Omni Slash can just bounce anywhere, right? That's the only difference? Yeah. That's, uh, Omni Slash can stay on you, but Tricks of the Trade will provide area denial. Still, but... Uh, it really makes him a much better hero as a pickoff for pickoffs. Hmm. If I were going to think of anything, I'd build him a really early aggressive off lane, grabbing phase drums and uh, you know blightstone, anything that'll help him get higher DPS and get ganks off with this. I'm gonna go uh, ahead in game and start messing around with some Ricky while you're talking, but. Uh... Yeah, I think that uh, that'll be uh, really good 
for him. It'll give him another way to be played ex other than the position four or five. I'm just going to ward invisibly and occasionally smoke screen. Other than that, uh, Shadow Demon's Purge uh, just makes him a lot better versus the heroes that he was already good to be picked up against. Uh, one thing that I uh, was thinking of was Sven and other heroes like him that have their survivability s supplied by spells that they can put on themselves. Legion Commander's W, for uh, example. Being able to continuously purge instead of just the initial one keeps them from defending themselves after they've been ulted. I, uh, I want to, I'm trying to, I want to touch on something with the Ricky, but I want to, I will circle right back to the Shadow Demon point you just made. Um, do you know if Ricky can attack between, well, you know how Omni Slash you can attack between the Omni Slash strikes? Can Ricky do that as well? I'm trying to tell from the uh, No, I think it's a hard limit. Yeah, so it doesn't look like he's getting extra attacks. But a I'm gonna point five stuff, second though. attack speed is still very good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, uh, really what I'm thinking is, like, instead of building attack speed items, build more damage utility uh, nullifier. It was a big one. That way you could have someone silenced and broken in smokescreen, the damage that you ult them with, slowing them, keeping them in smokescreen. Hmm. I could definitely imagine uh, Ricky stacking auras, or, you know, stacking, uh, sorry, like a... Hit my, like he could go, you know, S and Y, Basher, Scotty, something like that, and just you would never be able to escape from him at that point. Uh, definitely, it makes his ult a, uh, well, really, I, as it starts getting later, yeah, it would be uh, a lot scarier than an Omni Slash. Um, Omni Slash, you at least have your ways to get out of it. I'm going to go towards creeps. Well, save me from a couple hits that won't work with this you have to get out of that area you have to hug your and buddy, at 25 basically. that area is huge yeah so you, you you have to have another ally jump in with you kind of like uh sunstrike or spells like that you know uh, mystic flare yeah yeah hmm. so and even then you're still weakening two heroes right well it's it's Area of Denial, like you said. It's an interesting spell. It's much more interesting, I think, now than it was before. Um, so let's talk about Shadow Demon now. So the gist of what you said before we circled back uh, was... It makes him a stronger counter. Uh, yeah, stronger counter because it's constantly dispelling versus a single dispel before, right? Or was it only at the start before, or was it at the start and the end? Only at the start. Yeah, so basically... Yeah, it's uh, uh, heroes that I could see it really affecting uh, more. Uh, well, yeah, Sven, Legion. I'm trying to think of other heroes that really keep themselves alive by their. Well, against Omni by a is buff. the first thing I thought of. Oh. Omni Knight, yeah. That is a big one. Omni Knight will. And really, yeah, this is a big counter for Omni Knight. I didn't think of that one. I mean, it does feel like the since the addition of like uh, break and kind of this rework to how dispel and all these other, uh, you know, mute was added to the game. All these effects have been added. It feels like they're continually refining them, and it almost feels like, you know, now that these mechanics are a little more well understood that they're playing with them and making them more interesting because I feel like before you know his ult was okay before but now that it's a constant dispel it's more useful like I don't know it actually yeah it's feels uh, like definitely all the dispels are distinct now you know because they each have their own you know like Enchantress's dispel Shadow Demon's dispel Nullifier like they all kind of have a distinct flavor definitely I'm gonna say that Shadow Demon is definitely gonna be uh, in people's pockets as a uh, counter pick more often than he was before from this rework. The only other thing that really came to mind was uh, uh, Slark as a position 4. With that uh, better HP regen I can see him uh, roaming around with Pounce early game where Pounce is really good that leash 
will keep heroes in an area for other people to wail on. And with that extra HP regen, he can move from lane to lane, tanking wave and uh, the hits while that leash is going out. <clears throat> I think both Slark and Slarter could be coming back into the meta almost. I don't know. I, I would like to wrap up the show on a note that kind of uh, summarizes, you know, and predicts a little bit. But since there's only the two of us, and I would say neither one of us is going to sound smart <laughs> enough to uh, predict yeah, yeah, things, yeah. let's uh, l let's like let's just try to talk it through a little bit. Because honestly, talking about the heroes that have been buffed, it's it's the Phoenix, it's the uh, I need to go look at the list now. I'm gonna actually uh, I the patch window. Oops, hold on. Patch window. Um, so yeah, Ricky, Io, Shadow Demon, Phoenix are the big ones, and the nerfs are oh, and, and Darkseer I would throw in there, and then Chen and Chen's yeah. nerfs. I think Valve is really trying to push away from uh, the heroes that would typically just stomp and close out extremely early. Chen, Enchantress, and uh, ones here that w got hits. Uh, Gyrocopter can't farm as well, yeah, so he has to really carries. commit for that early magic damage. Hmm. I would say some of the heroes that got buffed and are other heroes... fighting style are alternatives. Like, Ricky is, you know, you compared him to Juggernaut, you could see him as a, you know, more aggressive ganking replacement for someone like Juggernaut in a certain sense now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to test that out in my pub, so... Well, uh, hopefully people will believe me. The only other thing that I could see, like, really coming into play is uh, some more Leshrac picks. He has yeah. been absent from the meta for the longest time. But with that Lightning Storm uh, rework, I could see him played as a mid-hero similar to Zeus, using it as a last-hitting skill. It has, like, a four-second yeah. cooldown, if I remember correctly. And Zeus got buffed as well in that regard with his actual attack animation, so both of those heroes might be coming back to the meta. Who knows? I could uh, see him uh, going along with an aggressive pushing strat with a, shadow, a team that picks up a Shadow Shaman and uh, other types of wave clear. Something that uh, I uh, could see that working for a professional team. It feels a little bit better. Uh, I can definitely tell already. It's a lot harder to miss it since the cast point is better and the damage is. Oh, I missed that one. Oh well. Clearly, I need to practice yeah. my Latrac, but uh, I do have a pretty good. He used to be one of my favorite heroes to play. I always felt like I could never lose playing this hero. I would love to see like the. Uh, you know the support the track honestly the uh, the, the Sundal Melon special honestly yeah I'd I'd be happy for Disco Pony too Electric Boogaloo well I don't want him to be as oppressive as he used to be as far as the meta goes but maybe we will be lucky and he can hit that sweet spot I just think maybe it's gonna take another patch or two before TI but we're looking really great as far as I mean I don't feel like this is push there, there's nothing dangerous in this patch as far as becoming overpowered is my first impression, I guess. There's nothing that really strikes me as going to break the game. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that I have a, the slightest concern about would uh, Troll Warlord's base attack time. I'm <laughs> always concerned by base attack time changes. Even the slightest amount can affect how the hero is played. Mm. Jugs having a uh, what is it? Point one I think this is lower point. base attack time than oh most other agility carries has made him extremely prevalent in the meta. Is just he has farming speed. You can build attack speed items and works really well with him and then synergy with his ultimate. One point Troll four. Warlord already has his attack speed buffs innate oh. to him. Cool. Hey, Fat Sloth is on the way, so we're, we actually have uh, right. another Discord friend on the way all right cool well all right. um i was gonna but say but if the uh, troll warlord chan like i feel like that hero hasn't even seen his resurgence because he's gotten so many i actually wish we had a list of all the but let me go pull it up all the changes to that hero over the last few patches he's definitely ripe and uh you know what they picked him today too um 
Can I get it in game? Yeah. Hmm. That's uh, yeah. I'm pulling up his change log now. Yeah, he's just had solid buffs with his talents. Uh, hasn't really been touched since 7.07, .07, where he had that. Uh, Yeah, just, uh, yeah, he hasn't really seen much change to him lately. Which, uh, uh, considering how big a base attack time change is to a hero, like, most people thought Doom was dumpstered after his uh, base attack time got increased by 0.1. Oh, I feel like we're, I mean, <laughs> I feel like us being, uh, you know, I feel like the true Dota 2 stereotype is like obsessing over that kind of change and I would not say that you're wrong. I agree with you. The point is that like it's so hard to take something like a base attack time change and, and imagine what would actually be the, like basically you have to imagine there's like a, a tiny fringe of circumstances where Troll Warlord would get an extra attack off or something like that and it makes the difference in getting a kill or a tower or something like that and like Imagining how that affects the meta is just so, uh, you know, it's, it's, you'd have to be a supercomputer to do it accurately. So, I guess what I'm saying is, oh, yeah. I saw Troll Warlord, Warlord earlier today at DAC, and he looks strong already. And it kind of makes me think, you know, like, sure, maybe you could have won, like, I don't know, did you watch DAC last night? I've uh, watched a couple highlights of okay. it. I'm just, like, what I would love to know is if they played that same game on the new patch, what would happen? Um... If they would win it, it's, you know? Uh, this is just, uh, yeah, I would like to see. Uh, I have a feeling that he might be picked up later today. Sure. Well, I'll give you some uh, just uh, if that happens, for sure. I'm going right. to bring uh, El Sloth in here, um, assuming he's ready. All right, all right. I'm probably going to go try out a Riki in a pub. It's cool. been nice being here. All right. Appreciate it. Come back next right. time. See you uh, uh, yeah, see ya. Oh, I can, uh, yeah, there you go. Alright. Hey, Sloth. Uh, there we go, am I in here? Yeah, yeah, I hear you now. So, maybe, Is my uh, mic working? Yeah, I hear you. Do you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 you're all uh, good. No, when I get, uh, when I have the money to pay a producer, I'll have somebody to do this off the air for me, but yeah, no, uh, for right now... It's just me running the show, so we've got to do our uh, sound check live on the air, folks. It's all good. But uh, I'm glad you made it home in time to catch the show. So I don't know if you heard anything we already covered, and therefore it won't matter if you... Uh, I w certainly don't mind hearing just your highlights, uh, regardless of what we already talked about. But I think we pretty much you know, we hit on everything. Like Mostly we've talked about which heroes got big buffs. So do you have like a Yeah, I was actually... Change? I was listening on the commute home, and... My favorite change, no question, is definitely on uh, Shadow. I really hope that this hero actually see, like sees some real play time, and it's not just going to be, "Hey, I have I have Luna on my team. I'm right. going to pick Shadow Demon." It'll actually be more of a response pick instead of strictly looking at ally. I think you could definitely see that some of the changes that have been made are looking to make certain heroes more are less one dimensional. It's always annoying when a exactly. hero is, is just, you know, like, oh, I see Luna, I pick Shadow Demon. Even if she's on the other team, exactly. it works that way. Like, yeah. So. And, I mean, it's just really, it's really upsetting whenever a hero kind of falls in. I'm, I'm strictly going to either partner or face X, Y, or Z. And you're just giving, you're giving other options for the hero. Like, when you guys brought up Omni Knight, I hadn't even think, I didn't even think of that yet. I got so excited, like. I don't know if you know this about me, but I absolutely hate Omni Knight. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that he has a real counter now because I feel like Nullifier is kind of intentionally designed to be one of those items you can't just get whenever you want it. You have to save yeah, like 300 exactly. gold. So um, I, I think that's a good niche for exactly. that item to stay in, but I think this is like the real counter he needed after. I mean, the only other mm -hmm. one is really Enchantress, and she just got kind of. I mean, yeah, I'm a little upset anyway. as, a, uh, as an inch pair. Yeah, she's but um she, one of my favorites. I just don't like the untouchable. I don't. I don't think she warranted as much as they gave. Right. But she did get a nice little buff. Um, the impetus mana cost is yeah. actually really, really big. Uh, I can't tell you how many times after like normally in like a decently skilled pub, 
the second your inch is like five and a half, she's going to always call for rotations. It's just like a brewmaster. Like the second you hit level six, you can surprise and gank your opponent, and you'll always get a kill out of it. But any time that I do that, I immediately have to ferry out like clarities and whatnot. And I'm really hoping that that uh, impetus mana cost decreases is really going to make a change for. Her. Yeah, it, it kind of. Uh, I wish I. In my head, I have this like graph of what the heroes, you know power curve looks like almost and I, I've been trying to figure out how I could draw on the screen so I could just freehand it because several of the heroes mm -hmm. that received changes this patch they all had their power curves adjusted in the same way almost and I feel like Enchantress here and then also um, Timbersaw is the other one that really stands out as the same exact kind of change because of the way Chakram yeah. got changed but there's other heroes that have had that same adjustment recently and it's just interesting to see how People have compared it to like making our game faster paced, like League, in, in a certain sense, but I feel like it just made, like, it, it, it's like this tippy balance they're trying to strike between like encouraging early fighting and pushing without making snowballing too powerful of a strategy. So, I don't know. This mm -hmm. seems like it's going to be a great patch for like, I mean, the AC. Yeah, I really welcome it too. I, I mean, coming from Hot as my primary game for a very, very long time. That was probably my biggest meta shift that I did like was that um, when I switched back over to Dota, uh, I went from originally from Warcraft 3 Dota over to Han for about four and a half years. And when I switched back, it was our AFK farm, like Spectre, Juggernaut, etc. And it, I just, I, I don't know, I hate metas like that. I really welcome anything yeah. that kind of pushes the envelope for early game, like... So I'm actually really excited about a lot of this. It almost seems like the nerfs to Chen and Enchantress are meant to um, push them towards laning. I've been wondering myself <laughs> whether we're going to see like <clears throat> the Chen offlane continue from Ice Ice Ice. Because, I mean, literally last night, Ice 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 was playing four-position Chen, and their four-position player was playing the offlane. Yeah, I saw that. That was in uh, DAC, right? Yep. And it just makes me wonder, did did these changes undo everything that Ice 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 thought about the game? Or did this further, like, I, I actually don't feel like I'm, you know, looking at the... My perspective is not set in stone yet. I'm not sure which one it is. I will say, like, I mean, you, you know me, like, I'm, I play probably 95% off. And Chen really needed this change. Like, yeah. <laughs> Everybody knew it was it was a little upsetting because I I don't know it if I have a Chen on my team I can pick whatever I want it doesn't matter I can pick Crystal Maiden off lane I'm gonna get levels I'm going to get XP and I'm gonna get farm because there's there's nothing that you can do to directly respond to it and I, I really feel like that's just that's not Dota like there shouldn't be an example of a hero where oh well they pick Chen guys okay well we're just gonna pick some aggressive heroes and try and you know poop on their mid because there's nothing we can do to their offlaner really i mean so i, I kind of welcome teams, this change when teams identify that that kind of hero exists and they abuse mm -hmm. it i enjoy that because it makes me feel excited about you know the team but like if, if that kind of thing persists for a long time and becomes like the set meta, yeah which is kind of what happened well, admittedly exactly exactly and i welcomed it when it started but uh I mean, after a while, it kind of gets a little monotonous, and I, I think that's what really keeps Dota interesting, is mm -hmm. Ice Frog isn't afraid to take the identity of a hero and morph it into something else, you know? Yeah, it kind of makes me think of... And, uh, I mean, no pun intended, but I mean, that's yeah, kind of what we did with Morphling. Yeah, I knew exactly <laughs> where you were going with that one. Uh, it makes me think of Disruptor and how he was kind of like omnipresent, and he's getting these little nerfs right now that are just going to mm -hmm. hopefully, like, you know... I'm I'm kind of hoping that he ends up having an identity besides just being what he is now. Like, anyway, we don't have to go down the disruptor uh, path. Actually, we haven't talked about it with anyone yet. Um, I mean, not with Tree Man, and I didn't talk about it myself very much. Um, all I said was that I called it. Do you have an opinion on Pangolier and what he's going to do to the game? Yeah. <laughs> um, that is the one offlaner I refuse to play right now <laughs> because I I do not feel that he's very fair. Um. Well, I, I, I don't I really know him, how to I would fix try to not abuse the the bugs, you know what I mean? Because there's bugs yeah. with him, and I wouldn't have used those if I was a Pango player. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really know if... <laughs> See, I wish I could like just be super objective and just, I don't know, 
even Purge has his own opinions, but my thing with Pingo is I always, I've always thought Battle Fury seems so good on him, and I'm gonna be sad if like mm -hmm. that item gets nerfed before Battle Fury like one position Pingo can be a thing. Um, I think he's definitely a good offlaner. I just think that he has dimension, and people don't really ever really talk about. At, I compare him to like Gyrocopter or a Jargon or someone like that because he could go and at level six gank with a stun. Versus yeah, other a, yeah absolutely. Like, I, I'm not dropping any names, but there are uh, there's a few high level NA players that legitimately pick Pango every game, and I, I I'll just flat out warn my safe lane. I'm like, look, I, I face this guy every single day. Like, do not. Underestimate him. The second he hits level six, he can kill you. Like he doesn't need anything more than boots. And even then, I don't even think he really needs that. For being realistic, like, the hero has a, an insane power spike at level six. And I mean, what, what other what other hero in the off lane can go bootsless into an eleven hundred gold item and oh, just wait what? dump on your carry? Like, so he's just and he's what's just worse is I I, I feel so double? bad for like a position five to zone him because you. You're going to trade hits until he uh, until he Qs or Ws, and the second he Qs or Ws, you've lost the trade. If he Ws, he has too much damage mitigation, and then if he Qs, he's out of your range, but he's also getting some hits on you in the process, you know? Hmm. He's a very, very, very good hero, and I, I like his design a lot, but yeah. I just feel like his power is a little, a little too high right now. So, to elaborate just a little bit, most of what you're seeing is the max... Is it max W over Q, or is it max Q and W skipping Heart Piercer um, completely? It is max Q and W. Uh, in in pubs, I see uh, max Q first. Mm -hmm. um, but in competitive, it's, it seems like it's kind of up in the air right now. Because, I, I mean, the real, the real crazy part about the hero is how much damage mitigation you can get through your right. W. And maxing it earlier is obviously going to spike that even the, harder. Uh, like high skill cap part of the hero is using W effectively, but... Mm -hmm. I uh, I always have, in fact, I've actually been wondering whether there's like a, an alternative build that's like a, a run at you build with heart piercer max. But regardless, I always tend to leave oh, I'd love shield that. crash uh, kind of low. Um, I I don't put mm -hmm. points in heart piercer over it. I just I do like four one one, you know, that kind of thing. I guess. Yeah. No, and and that's that's a healthy way to think about the game too. That's kind of how I always approach uh, a hero like. Uh, the second that Dark Willow came out, I called her as an offlaner. I, I don't think I have, let's see, I have uh, 109 games on the hero. I think I have two as a support. And I, I remember when the hero first came out, all my friends were sitting there laughing at me. I'm like, look, man, I, I have I have like a 70% win rate on this hero, and I'm first picking her. Like, y'all are really not looking at the real power of the hero, you know? And I feel like that's a healthy way to look at the game is if somebody is willing to experiment. Because that's how, that's how the new metas kind of get found. Yep. I, I'm, I'm just waiting for some of the heroes that... Um, I feel like the story between last TI and the upcoming TI is going to end up tying back together. And some of the heroes we mm -hmm. saw... You know, maybe it's just going to be more balance patches that push them to where they need to be. But it, it could honestly just be, you know, the meta circling around. I think there's going to be a lot of the heroes... Maybe it's going to happen starting at, like, this tournament, honestly. We're going to see some of these heroes start to peek out, but, like, one of the trends I would highlight maybe is the mid Kunkka. I don't know if that's ever going to pick up besides Ooh, uh, just mid uh, doing it, but, like, isn't that crazy yeah. how strong it is when Secret do it? It, it is pretty crazy. And, I mean, I, I think that's another one of those examples, like, when whenever anybody ever talks about the meta of heroes, there's always those certain heroes that come back up with that stipulation of if you have a player for it, you know what I mean? Like your Earth Spirits, Invokers, etc. And I really think Kunkka falls into that as well. Like if you have somebody like Mid One who's just exceptional on the hero, it, it doesn't really matter what place the hero is in. Like he can shine. That's interesting. I don't uh, think I've heard that point made exactly before. So I think that's probably true. I mean, it's kind of just like this. I started to say the skill shot nature of the hero, but it's it's more than just that because you have to yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to, I know what you to mean. make use of the X marks. I think as a like a support tool almost, you know, to to mm -hmm. go back to base and refuel and things like that. You can draft around it if you want to. So it's kind of just a willingness to make use of the hero. And some some teams just you know, for example, don't like certain heroes or they don't have a player who wants to play the hero. So yeah. Hmm. And you can you can see that a lot if you look at uh, at band against specific teams. I, I don't have uh, specific examples myself as I haven't really been following competitive yeah. for the last few weeks. 
but uh, like like over time, we've seen heavy, heavy, heavy trends where there's just teams that you'll flat out not even ban meta heroes simply because you understand that their carry player does not play that. And I mean that, that's just that's just kind of how it goes, uh, especially with like tier one Dota, where every team has data on each other. You know, like at this day and age, we typically see that teams are going to have a coach whose specific job is to have like draft analysis, knowledge of what they're going to be facing. Uh, I really like it that that uh, that the captain or the coach slot is actually like taken seriously nowadays because of that. Our meta is always constantly shifting, and I really think it's thanks to that. I could not disagree with any of that. I'm just wondering what the heck they're thinking leaving all these Pango bugs in the game. Do you think people are going to yeah. complain about that? I feel like they probably will, like, at the tournament. The real shame is uh, I'm, I'm a man of strong opinions, so I could be completely wrong, but I don't think we're actually going to see any Pango play <laughs> at I, all. I wouldn't doubt you. I, I think just, he's going to I think he's gonna get banned. Yeah. I, I just... Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure it, if you That's the one yeah. hero that, that I just see so many complaints on because there, there's a lot of bugs compared to like let's say dark willow uh and it's just it's just a hero that like going back to what i had said about chen like there's just not an immediate response to it like I, i'll see lots of threads up that will people will be like oh well you could get something like a rob of autos or mm -hmm. or a blood seeker and i'm sitting here thinking like competitively speaking in a tier one dota scene those are irrelevant choices because then you have a hero that has a rod of autos or you have a blood seeker on your team lord forbid you know uh, i just feel like he's in a place where his <laughs> his counters in the game aren't up to par with where he's at and i, I think that's mainly his big problem you know i can't disagree with you because i haven't played any I haven't played a single real Pango game even though i adore the hero i just yeah. i actually was kind of afraid of playing him at first and we'll see if i think i'm going to go make myself play him now that he's in cm like for real but uh oh yeah man I'm i mean give him a try he's, he's, he is a lot of fun yeah well i just don't want to abuse any of the uh, stuff just, that's cheesy i just avoid like him that's... just because i feel i feel kind of wrong playing. yeah well but I'm just he is a lot of fun like a like result you know if you catch someone yeah. in an alleyway and they're just standing there like what, what are they thinking you're not supposed to <laughs> i i won't feel bad about that but i'm not gonna be like the guy who buys yules and tells my uh life stealer to go agonims <laughs> Yeah, I won't do that, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I don't think those things are necessarily broken if they have counterplay, but I don't think they have counterplay right now, so. Yeah. <clears throat> well. Now, um, before we go, mm -hmm. I I was listening on my uh, ride home. Yeah. Are you in the Dota clients? So you could test them? Yeah, I am. Because uh, I don't, it was either you or Tree Man that brought up uh, Nullifier on Ricky, and... Oh, in yes, the late game him. situation, that sounds that sounds absolutely amazing. Can you test if yeah. Tricks of the Trade activates the slow on nullifier? You would assume that it must, but that could even be a decent second or third item if you really want. Yeah, to Yeah, exactly. For yeah, like if you're against if you're against those those kinds of options that are really like BKB or reliant or like Manta, or, uh, that could be like insane. If if that slow goes with the slow of a uh, smoke screen. It, that could be a really potent combo, and I didn't even think about that until I heard you guys talk about it. It seems like it does proc, but I'm going to try that again. Hold on. Oh, yeah, because in my opinion, that's probably the most uh, ignored part of Nullifier. I mean, obviously, removing con like current buffs and not allowing them to BKB, Satanic, etc. is amazing. But the slow is its nothing to uh, to write off. It's pretty dang good. Oh, I have to cast... Okay, I know what I'm doing. Hold on, I have to cast it first. You can't yeah, yeah, cast yeah. items during his ult. I thought it was kind of like uh, Omni Slash. Mm -hmm. Revealing myself... Yeah, that was the other thing player. I heard you guys talking about. <laughs> I, I was a Ricky player until he, I think he's been nerfed a little too much right now. But I, I think this could bring him back. He's got some crazy kill potential. I'll, I'll never forget the, um, oh, what Chinese team was it? I think it was uh, VGJ that ran Ricky with double Wraith Band with an offlane Magnus. And he would just get empowered and go walk around and just annihilate the enemy supports. And that they would be like so starved that they wouldn't be able to fight. 
Was it IG? I mean, I can't remember what team it was. It was about a year ago, and I remember it was a Chinese team, and I just thought that was so innovative that right. a team would think of just completely forgetting about trying to, you know, rush defusal, which was at the time the obvious meta, yeah. and instead just, you know, investing in these low value or low return wraith bands. Because I mean, obviously later in the game you're going to end up selling that, so that's right. gold that you could you be just spending ramp otherwise. Up really hard, basically. Yeah. And it was just, it was kind of like an all-in call, but it was so effective. Like, it would consistently just, just wreck house. I know it was Bobica who stacked uh, Rings of Aquila, so that's uh, mm -hmm. a flavor of the same strategy. Slightly more trolly, of course. <sighs> yeah, stuff like that's always really cool. Mm. Uh, unless, all right, this is an opportunity for you if there's anything you want to say as a wrap-up, because I think I need to go, unfortunately. I don't want to linger too much longer. Yeah, no problem. Um, so if you I have think any I'm just about thoughts, good, man. Uh, okay. I do appreciate you uh, having the open yeah. invite, though. I'd love to, to come on another. Oh, it was great. Uh, both of you, Trima and Sloth, have been great. So the first guest was Trima. And you guys don't even have... Uh, just come... If you guys want to, want to meet uh, these guys or any of the other part of our community, come hang out in Discord. Uh, I tweeted it out earlier. If you guys have, um, have me on Twitter, it's at Freelance Dota. You can find it there. Also, of course... I represent uh, True Dota, so that's where we are on Reddit. Check us out. Um, thanks for being here, Sloth. Uh, I think we're just going to close it on that note. I'm looking forward to DAC tonight. I'll probably be like live tweeting or something like that. The the new meta. Yeah, so. absolutely. I'll be uh, I'll be definitely watching that with our live matches channel. Yep. It's always enjoyable. All right. Nice nice plug. See you guys in Discord. See you on Reddit. And uh, thanks for tuning in. There'll be another show two weeks from now. Um, I wish I had an announcement to make about it, but for now, all I can say about the other show I'm going to do on Thursdays is uh, hopefully next week I'll have an episode to put out, but hopefully uh, I'm working on it. So thanks again for being here, guys, and we'll see you back in two weeks. I'll be casting in the meantime probably, but uh, see you guys around.